She's the lawyer behind the infamous billboard campaign, Life Short, Get a Divorce. Lawyer Corey Fetman is here to answer your legal questions. Good morning. Thanks for being here. Good morning. How are you? I'm doing well. Let's go right to the first question from Marie in Park Ridge. Two days before the wedding, my fiancé told me he did not love me anymore and was calling off the wedding. I have spent almost $60,000 and cannot get any of it back from the vendors. I want to sue him. Do I have a cause of action? He wants the ring back. Do I have to give him the ring back? Oh my God, what a situation mm -hmm. that is. Right. So, yes, you do have a cause of action. And yes, you're going to do what every red blooded female wants to do. You're going to sue them. But what do you have to know before you go forward with that lawsuit, Robin? Yeah. You've got to get your receipts together, okay? Yeah. So, you spent $30,000 on the haul, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. You got that Vera Wang dress for $10,000, right? Yeah. And how about your mother in law's dress? You spend $500 on that. You're going to compile all of these receipts together. Then what are you going to do? You're going to put forth a notice. And what are you going to put in this notice? The date that he proposed. The date of the wedding. And then you're going to put all of those actual damages. Now what are actual damages? Out-of-pocket costs. What you spent on this wedding. Couldn't he argue though that she's the one who wanted this big wedding. I never, I never signed anything and agreed to be doing this anyway. Illinois has the breach of promise to marry oh. act. He promised to marry her. Now how is she going to get this money back from the vendors? It's two days before the wedding, yeah. right? Okay. There's no way she's going to get but it back. She doesn't have to get the ring back. Does she? Let's go to the ring. Ring is based on fault. So he canceled hmm. the wedding. She keeps the ring. All right. Yeah, if, if no, I'm if, with you. So she keeps the ring, right? Right. Now, emotional damages. Because you're going to ask about that, right, Robin? Well, we, it's only a four-hour show. Yeah, she's, we got to get She's we, distraught, though. Yeah. She's okay. distraught, Robin. Yeah. She's not getting emotional damages. Ah. It's, you cannot collect emotional huh. damage. Okay. Who knew? Boy, you could be a millionaire. <laughs> uh, next question from Colleen in Bolingbrook. I am a successful entrepreneur. I want to file for a divorce, but I am concerned that I will have to pay my husband maintenance, even though my husband is quite capable of supporting himself. Do I have to stay in this loveless marriage, or will, I, will the court do something so I do not have to support him? This is really, really common now, especially in this economy where people are losing jobs. I represent a lot of people where their spouse lost their job and then they don't want to work. They're going through a divorce, right? right? So, you know what? You can support me. So what do you want to do? First thing that you want to do is you want to file, you want your lawyer to file a petition so that your spouse has to maintain job diaries. The second thing that you want to do is you want to make sure that the court order is very specific. So those job diaries are going to have how many contacts, how many interviews per week. And you're going to have all that contact information and you're going to make sure that the job diaries are sent to your lawyer. Then you're going to have your lawyer follow up nine out of ten times. These are not real contacts. They're not real interviews. And your lawyer can file a petition to hold this person in contempt if that's happening because they're lying on this job mm -hmm. diary and it's part of, part of the court record. And then lastly, what you want to do, in the event that this person is not taking any of these job opportunities that are offered to them because you can, you can find this out, you want to ask the court to impute income. Now, what does that mean? If during the marriage they were making $100,000 and now they're working at McDonald's and they're making, what, minimum wage, you're going to ask the court to order maintenance in accordance with that hundred thousand dollars because they're acting in bad faith hmm. and they should be paying. Mm. All right. Time for one last question from Laura. I am going through a nasty divorce with custody issues. I met a man and I want to start dating him. Will this affect my divorce and what are the legal consequences? Mm. Oh, this this is very common. People ask this all the time. Everybody wants to date during divorce. I don't know how they find time, but they want to date during a divorce. There's no real legal consequences because the statutes say it's without marital and misconduct. So in other words, the, the statute is going to look at property and they're not going to look at marital misconduct, in other words, dating. However, dating falls under what I call the three Ds. Drama, disintegration, and digression. Drama. Anytime you're bringing anybody else into the equation, there's going to be drama. It's going to be, you know, you're going to be focusing on that person. You're rubbing salt in the wounds, And it right? could come back to haunt you. It, absolutely. All that right. person is going to come in. They're going to be subpoenaed for a deposition. Mm -hmm. It's going to be a problem. we got to stop you there, Corey. But here's more information for Corey if you want to reach out to her. CoreyFetman.com. And CFALawFirm.com as well. She also writes an advice column for ChicagoNow.com. Thanks so much. Thanks, Corey. Thanks.